Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Night Church. I uh, just trust that God has been working in your life. We're about to turn this corner into 2021, and this is our last time to worship together before we come back together in this next year. And I want to just take a minute. Let's just establish the presence of the Lord in our homes, in our in our immediate area right there i want you just right now just to close your eyes and we're just going to invite the presence of the lord into this service into this time together and just pray the hand of the lord and his blessing over this time and this night right now father in the name of jesus we come to you lord we lift up our hands wherever we are we lift up our hands in our homes in our in our uh offices, wherever we happen to be participating in this service, we come to you and Lord, we pray that you would just pour out your spirit upon this church, Lord, wherever people are meeting, wherever we are worshiping together and gathering together, I pray for your anointing there in the midst of your people. I pray for your spirit to move in homes and marriages to lord to do a miracle lord in any situation that is that, that people are facing lord as we bring our needs before the throne of grace god i just pray that you would move in this service that you would move in our lives we need you holy ghost holy spirit we need your presence oh we need your presence we need your anointing upon our lives god i just pray that you would save us from from efforts without your mercy and work without your blessing upon it i pray god that you would just anoint this service anoint every aspect of this night this time together and we give you the praise and glory in jesus name amen amen before we get into the word of god this evening i want to just uh, give you opportunity to to just exercise your faith and to step out in faith in this area of sowing seed and tithing and just the 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 things that God has has called us to. These are our uh, Christian disciplines that to be faithful in this area of giving and sowing and and into the kingdom of God. I was thinking about. Uh, the story where Jesus was feeding the multitudes. I was thinking how much we do, how many, how much people do in life, and all of their doing is inadequate for the task that is at hand. The disciples, as Jesus was there and he was ministering to the multitude, uh, the he didn't want to send the people away. He wanted to feed the people. And he asked the disciples, he says, what do we have? And they looked around and they said, well, all we have is this little boy's lunch. And I think so many times we are doing things, just as I was praying earlier, we have the efforts and the work and we're, we're laboring and we're doing all of these things that are probably, you know, in our eyes, the right thing, but producing very little in the way of results. And the reason that the work that we do doesn't produce fruit or the, the efforts that we uh, take don't produce the kind of fruit that we want to see is because it does not have the blessing of God on it. There was something supernatural that took place when they took that lunch, those those five loaves and those two fish, and they put those into the hands of Jesus. And it, the Bible says that he lifted it up before the Lord and he prayed and he blessed it. There is a blessing that comes upon our lives that, that is absolutely necessary if we're going to see miracles take place. Miracles in our finances. You need, if you need a miracle in your home, you, need the, you don't just need to, uh, I mean, church is good and being in, in uh, you know, all of the things that we do are good. But without the blessing of God, it's, it's just our own efforts. 
We need his blessing, and that, and that blessing brings a multiplication in our lives. And let me just say something about the, the tithes themselves. When we separate our tithe and we say, God, this is yours, we put it into his hands. We're basically saying, God, I lay this in your hands. Do what you want with it, God. I know that you're the, you're the, the master. You're the giver. He has a way of multiplying those, those resources for his glory. Not for our own glory, but for his glory. And the other 90% that we, that we have is, is there by blessed because we've put God first. So I want to challenge you in this area of tithing, in the area of sowing and reaping. Don't just say, well, I, I'm, I'm just giving and it's, you know, I, I'll give when I can or if I have enough at the end of the month or however that might work out. Set it aside. Say, God, this, this belongs to you. I'm not going to touch it. It's the first fruits. It's the first of what you've blessed me with. And I want you to know there's a blessing that will follow in your life. The, the meeting of the need that you have and that, that so many of us have, the meeting of the need is not dependent on the supply. You say, well, I don't, I don't make that much or I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm lacking in so many areas. That doesn't even matter. What matters is the blessing of God on that that we give to him. So let's pray over our offering. Let's pray and, and over, over the tithes. And there will be a way, some ways that you can give here on the screen. Uh, I want to just pray the blessing of the Lord over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, as we step out in obedience to you, that, God, you would meet the need. We know it is not dependent upon our supply, that the, the miracle is, it takes place in your hands. I pray, Father, that you would pour out your blessing upon these finances, these tithes and offerings, Lord. Let it, let it go to meet a need and to further the gospel so that we can reach the lost. We can disciple workers. We can plant churches and support missionaries. I thank you, Father God, for the faithfulness that you've put in our hearts, God, that you've called us to be obedient. I pray, God, that you would help us to rise to the occasion and to be faithful, Lord, to close out this year strong and to begin this next year in the right way. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to just take a, a few minutes this this evening, and uh, I want you to grab your Bible, if you would. I want you to turn with me over to the book of Ephesians, and I want to just kind of prepare us this this evening for uh, the the this next week when we enter into this fast. We're going to be uh, starting this twenty one day fast, and uh, you know I. I've, I would say maybe a month and a half, two months ago, I was saying to myself, oh, I'm looking forward to that fast in January. Then today I got to thinking, oh my, the fast is coming up in January. I need to, I need to start uh, scaling back a little bit, preparing myself, getting myself ready for this fast. And I actually am looking forward to it because I know that there's something that happens in me in a fast, and there's something that God does in my own heart and in my own life that is is beyond just any other uh, time when I'm just serving Him. That it's there's something that is supernaturally taking place in my own life, and I'm looking forward to that. I want to just uh, minister tonight, uh, just on this on this thought of what prayer and fasting does in me. What prayer and fasting does in me. I know that, uh, you know, there are health benefits. There, there, you know, even the secular world is, is all about intermittent fasting. And, they, you know, it's a, it's a thing that people are, are caught up in many times. But I'm talking about the supernatural, the spiritual benefits 
of fasting and what prayer does in me. I like what C.S. Lewis once said. He said, prayer doesn't change God, it changes me. Think about that. Prayer doesn't change God, it changes me. There's something, God's never changing. He's, uh, he's always the same. He's, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But what prayer does is it changes my perspective. It does, it does move a, a something. It, 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 we'll get into that in just a moment on the, on the supernatural side. But it does something in my life. And fasting has the same effect. Fasting, it, there's something that changes in my own heart. And in my own life, that when I in, get involved, and especially when we have a time of corporate fasting and prayer, there's a concentrated uh, effort there. There's a synergy that is, that is there in a, in a body of believers where we're moving in the same direction and we're, we're praying for one another and we, are, uh, we, we have an expectation in our services. There's something even about our, our services that are different. When we're praying and fasting, and there's an awareness, there's a spiritual awareness of what God is doing that is heightened as a result of our, uh, I would say, our desire for Him, our longing for Him, our, our uh, hunger for Him. When we fast and we put food aside and we, we uh, shift our attention and our focus to spiritual things and get our eyes off of the, the natural and onto the supernatural, there, there's a hunger that's developed in us. And I pray that as you uh, commit yourself as you begin to plan for this fast and you begin to think about how you're going to participate, that there will be a hunger that, de that is developed in your heart. You won't just come in for a service and it's just business as usual. That you come in and you've got a, a desire for God. You want to be in those altars. You want to be down here praying. You want to be lifting your hands. You want to spend more time in prayer. You're not trying to look for ways to... To get out of things, you want to spend more time with Him. You want to increase your relationship with Him. That's what my prayer is during this fast. That as, a, as a body of believers, there is an increased appetite and hunger for the things of God. I know we'll be hungry for food, but put food aside. Food is not what we need. We need God to get, in, get involved in our lives. We need to be able to see what God wants to do with us in 2021. I was thinking about when we were living in East Africa and in Kenya, there was a constant awareness that we had to have of our surroundings. There, it was a situational awareness. If you were driving and you're driving at night, you don't want to be boxed in by uh, two vehicles that could potentially carjack you. You didn't want to be walking somewhere and somebody comes up behind you. I think people, even now there needs to be in our lives a, a situational awareness of what's going on around us. And we were aware of what was happening around us. We go on outreach we go preach in the slums and we would uh, we would go into places where i knew that there were there was a potential for trouble and there would be potentially people that would want to steal our equipment may want to steal a vehicle might want to hurt somebody and people would say pastor don't come to the outreach today there's been some rumors uh, in the in the village or the in the in this area that uh, there's thieves in the area and we want to we're not going to go to this area we're going to go to a different area and it was having some awareness when we pray and when we're fasting we are getting a spiritual perspective of what's going on in the world. We don't need to be spiritually ignorant. We don't need to be spiritually uh, blind to what's happening. And so many people are going to go into this next year and they're just going to say, well, you know, whatever happens, happens. But I don't think it ought to be like that with the people of God. There ought to be a spiritual awareness. And the world is unchanging, is, is changing around us, but God is unchanging. God is faithful. 
So there are some things that I believe we ought to consider that are unchanging truths. We have unchanging truths. And here is one of those. God has not pulled his spirit off of this earth. He's still working. He's still moving. He still wants to transform lives. But why don't we see more intervention from God? I believe there's a lack of hunger. And there needs to be a hunger in our own lives. And that's what fasting does in us. It creates a, an appetite and a hunger for the things of God. I don't want to be spiritually ignorant. I don't think you ought to be spiritually ignorant. Going into 2020, have some insight, have some wisdom. The problem is not with God. The problem is with us. The problem was, is, is with our ability to, to see things. And we've got so much to learn about the spirit realm. There is a real attack. There's a real devil. The more we learn, the more we understand, the more we begin to flow with the Holy Ghost and flow in the Holy Spirit and be able to receive from God, the more we are able to be in tune with Him, the better off we'll be. You, you, won't, you won't be blindsided in 2020, 2021 by anything that happens. Do we, do we have any guarantees? Of course, 2020 taught us that. You don't have a guarantee for this next year. But I will say this, if you begin this year in the right way and you'll put God first and you'll, uh, you'll, you will uh, develop this hunger for the things of God, He will do something in you that will totally blow your mind. It will completely um, amaze you how He begins to give you wisdom and you begin to hear His voice. It puts you in tune with what God is doing, what the Spirit is, is doing in these last days. God wants to use his people. He wants to do his will on this earth. And he's using us. He's going to use people in these last days. We need to learn how to move in the power of the Holy Ghost. So what is, a, what is one of the first things? I'll tell you one thing that is going to happen as we, as we go into this fast and, and we pray together. We're going to be pulling down some strongholds. And I want you to join me in pulling down these spiritual strongholds. Next Wednesday night on the, oh, I don't know what the date is. Something like the 7th, I think it is, 6th or 7th of, uh, of January. We're going to be meeting here in the building. We're going to have a prayer service and it's on a on Wednesday night. We're going to we're going to come in here. Uh, it will not be online. It's going to be right here in the in the building and we are going to pull down strongholds in that prayer meeting. We're going to have the building. We're going to have morning prayer from 6 to 7 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday throughout this fast. And I want to encourage you to be here for that fast, for that prayer meeting in the mornings. If you're able to, you can join us by, you can even park. We have the back door by the fellowship hall open that you can just park back there and come straight in. We're going to be praying. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling down strongholds. Let me tell you something. When you when you have this kind of aggressive uh, mentality and understand that you have an enemy and you have a, 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 a there is a, a devil that hates your destiny and hates your family and hates your marriage. He wants to destroy everything that you have. Every, every part of your life, he wants to destroy it. When you understand that you can go to God in prayer and you can pull down strongholds, things are going to be, they're going to change in your situation, in your life. Make it a priority. And if you don't start thinking about it, if you think, well, uh, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll fast and maybe I won't, then you probably won't fast. But if you make up your mind in advance and you say, you know what, I'm going to commit myself to prayer, I'm going to commit myself to fasting, then when the opportunity comes, you're not talking yourself out of it. 
So join us on Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. for prayer in the morning, and it's going to be a tremendous time together. You know, there, there's something that happens in prayer. Let me just say about prayer. P sometimes people are intimidated. Well, what's anybody going to think when I'm praying? They don't, I don't have the right words to say, or I'm not very eloquent. God's not concerned with our eloquence. He wants to hear the cry of desperation from our lives. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's in the Queen's English or if it's, uh, you know, just as illiterate as you think it possibly is. Pray and cry out to God. Have some boldness. Let, let it be vocalized. When we come in and we're, and we're together and we're worshiping God, vocalize your love and your worship. Let it be heard in heaven. Let the devil hear what you have to say. Somebody around you is going to be encouraged and is going to pray and agree and, and to stand with you. But there is a, a type of prayer that is an interceding prayer. It's a pulling down of strongholds where you're getting a hold of the, the garment of Jesus and you're holding on. And you're bringing heaven. It's pulling heaven down into your situation and you are taking authority and pulling down strongholds in the spirit world. Demonic things. There's a reason that some marriages are in such turmoil. There's a stronghold of perversion. There's a stronghold of rebellion and bitterness and unforgiveness. Pull those strongholds down. In Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 12, listen to what he says. He says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. That tells me there's a, there is a supernatural realm. And if anything is going to change in the supernatural, it is going to be because of something that I do in the natural. Something that I, some action that I take. And look at how many times Jesus asked the people that were being delivered or healed to do something. He was responding to their faith, but it wasn't just about him doing a miracle. He, he told them, do something. Stretch forth your hand. There's a response that you and I have. And there, the Word of God teaches us that God has given us and wants us to have total mastery over the devil. And when we wrestle against flesh and blood, we wrestle in prayer and we wrestle in these things. We are, we are holding the devil down when he wants to get up and he wants to, to wreak havoc in your, in your life and in your marriage. You've got to hold the devil down because he wants to get back up. And if, he, if you say, well, I finally got him whipped and I, I feel like I've got the victory and I can let up, guess what? He's coming back at some point. He will come back and try and work again, and we have to hold back the forces of hell and darkness, and we do that in prayer and in intercession. You know, a lot of people, they, they live good moral lives. They have the right things to say. They tithe. They're good people, but they're missing something that is, that is very, very important. They don't have this cutting edge in their Christian life. They don't have a, a they, there's not even a, any real dominion in their life. They never challenge the devil. They never challenge the, the, these things. We, when we go into this fast in, these next, in this next week, we are going to challenge the gates of hell. We need your, we need your agreement we need, uh, we need this entire church to get involved. We need people to join us in prayer and make it a priority. You don't want to go through this next year and just kind of have an a, a easy come, easy go attitude. We need to, we need to realize there are ser some serious things at stake here, both for our nation and individually and even for the church. But there's a prayer, a kind of prayer, that pulls down strongholds. Who can, who can do this type of thing? Who, can have, who has this kind of authority? Do you have to be serving God for 20 years to have that kind of authority? I don't think so. 
I, I would say a new convert, a brand new Christian who understands who he or she is in God can go to God the same as any other person, can, can enter into that, that supernatural uh, place and, and has authority when they pray, they, they can pull down strongholds. God's given all of us. If you're born again, you have that authority. And when we learn what it is to get into that, that place, that, that spirit realm of prayer and, and, and pulling down strongholds, we'll begin to see some changes in our lives. How do we, how do, we do that? By faith. So I, I don't see anything happening, Pastor. I prayed and nothing happened. More was taking place than you even realize. The devil will tell you, all oh, your prayers don't matter. That fasting is not working for you. But I want you to know God is at work in that situation. It doesn't matter what the devil says. Uh, I know who God is. I've seen what he's done. And I have seen too many people in a, in a time like this, in, in fasting and prayer, where God stepped in and did something supernatural that he would not, it would not have happened in any other time in their lives. Now, it was, it, there was something about that time of prayer and fasting. It says in Hebrews 11, 3, by faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command and that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. You know, a lot of people are, are fighting their battles in the natural, they've, they're, they think, well, I just need to work harder. I just need to be nicer. I just need to, uh, you know, uh, eat better, live, do this, that, and the other. And just like I shared in the offering a moment ago, it's all in their efforts. It, th their lives lack the blessing of God. Just as those disciples were inadequate in feeding those, that multitude, they, they lacked the blessing for the miracle. The blessing comes when we begin to trust God and we and his blessing is is poured out in our lives as a result of our faith and our obedience and putting it into his hands, committing it to him. Don't fight this battle. This, this is not a battle even that we that we just fight on our own. God is working with us. We're working together with God in these things and every one of us is called to intercede. So I don't, I don't really have that gift of intercession. Every one of us is called to intercede on behalf of somebody, on behalf of a situation. I get phone calls from people. I don't know who these people are. I'll, I'll be asked to pray for somebody. I've, I don't know them. I've never met them. I probably never will meet them. But I'll go to God and pray on their behalf, and I intercede on, on their behalf praying for them, fighting for them. Maybe nobody else in the world might be fighting or praying for somebody, but you can pray. You can fight on behalf of that, on, on behalf of that person. Get into the arena where God is, is into that supernatural arena where, where you begin to, to do battle against the devil and God begins to work in that situation. And I'll tell you, fasting is something that is Jesus puts it in the category of a necessity. Not, it's not a uh, maybe I will, maybe I won't. He puts it in the category of it's a necessity. He says, he says when you fast. In Matthew chapter 6, in verse 16, when you fast, and you ought to underline that in your Bible, when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Or it says, reward you openly. He says, when you fast, not whether or not it's convenient. I don't know very many people unless, you know, they're intermittent fasting or something like that. But most people don't want to deny themselves. They, they don't want to say no to their flesh. I think we ought to, you know, we ought to be willing to say no to our flesh. 
and make a decision that we're going to participate. How, how, do you, how should you fast? Well, you know, it depends on what you're going through. Depends on what you might be dealing with. How long, how, how long or what type? You know, some people, may, they may be pregnant, may be dealing with health issues, can't fast only on water. But I would say a good, a good majority of people would, would do themselves well to lay aside food, set it aside, and say, God, I'm going to put my intention entirely upon you. I've heard, I've heard all the things and many people over the years, well, I'm just going to fast television. I'm going to fast social media. You ought to fast those things anyways. But put food aside. Even, I'll, I'll just, this may be a, a little bit controversial for some, but even the Daniel fast, people are thinking about food and making food and, they've, and they've got, they're consuming themselves with that. There may be a time for that and, and, you know, however you choose to do it, that'll be between you and God and you have to work that out. But I would say there needs to be a, a time of separation and make it a sincere effort and say, God, I'm laying these things aside so that I can, I can focus on you and I'm not, I'm not consumed by those things. I want to hear from heaven. I need God. God, I need you to speak to my life. I need you to touch me. And if you have that heart and you'll have that attitude, you won't be, you know, oh, I'm dreading fasting. I'm so hungry. I, I, all I can think about is food. And, and, you know, you're going and looking in the refrigerator every five minutes or smelling candy bars or whatever, you know, whatever people do. I, I used to do that kind of stuff back when I was a teenager. I said, oh, I'm, I'm going to fast, but I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to lick this chicken bullion cube or something crazy, uh, you know, just to have the flavor. You know what? Let's, let's focus on the things of God. Let's say, God, I don't want anything this world has to offer. I don't need anything that this world has. All I need is you. What we need is the presence of God. What we need is to hear from heaven. What we need is a miracle. You might have a health condition. And you say, I don't know if God can do anything. Trust me, he can, do, he can work in that situation. It might be a marriage. There's been so many miracles that have taken place in, in a 21-day fast. People that are in this congregation that have been healed in their bodies, they've been, they've, their marriage was touched, there's something turned in their situation, and, and they can directly look back and say, it was during that time of fasting and prayer, God met me. God did something, and I can see it. It worked in my life. There was a blessing that they received. I need that in my life. You need that in your life. Let's get serious with God in this fast. Let me tell you, I'll tell you another thing that, that fasting does, and I'll just close on this, on this thought. Fasting creates in us an expectation for his return. It, re it creates in us an expectation for his return. Jesus is coming soon. We're expecting his return. They used to greet each other. In the, in the New Testament, there was a greeting that, uh, that, that they would use with each other. And that word is Maranatha. Maranatha. That meant, even so, come, Lord. Come, Lord. We're expecting you. They would greet each other like he's coming. We're expecting his return. And I think we ought to have that, that expectation as we're fasting that Jesus is coming back. We're going to be ministering on, the, on the, the, the last days, the end times in the book of Revelation here during the month of January. You combine that with the fact that we're fasting. Let me tell you something. Something's going to happen during the month of January. God's going to do something in this church. He's going to do something in your life. There is a, there, there's something that, the, that's taking place. I don't fully understand it. All I know is I want to be a part of what God is doing, and I want you to be a part of it. And we're going to, we're going to see God work in this church. Whatever the world does, the world's on its way to hell. We're on our way to heaven. And we're going to make heaven our home. And we're going to see our family saved. We're going to see some things turned in, throughout this fast. I want us to just bow our heads, if we could. Bow your head right there. If you're there with your, with your husband, your wife, your children, stop what you're doing. Put, things, put anything else aside 
that you might be doing, I want you to stop and I want you to just take just a moment and consider eternity is a long time. Eternity is a long time. Hell is a long time. It's, there, there is no reprieve. The time for responding to the voice of the Holy Spirit is he's knocking. Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. The time to respond is right now. You know that you need Jesus. You know you need forgiveness for your sin. You know you need the Savior. He came and he gave his life on the cross so that you could have forgiveness. And I want to pray with you a prayer of salvation. If you need Jesus to come into your life, you're tired and sick and tired of living the, a life that is, that is in sin, and you're tired of, of, the, of the way you've been headed, the direction you've headed, you say, I want, I want to make heaven my home. Pray this prayer with me right now. Grab the hand of your children, your husband or your wife. Pray this prayer together with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you right now. I am so sorry for my sins. And I ask you, Father, to forgive me of any, every, and all sin. I don't want to go into eternity without you. I don't want to be lost. Come into my life, Jesus. And I ask you to wash me. Take away my sins. And give me a new hope, a new heart. I surrender my life to you. And I belong to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to just encourage you we're going to have church on sunday morning at 9 a.m and 11 a.m and then on sunday this coming sunday night at five o'clock i want to invite you back into this place we're going to be showing some movies during the month of january that are that will it, it will excite you and they, and i think everybody ought to see these old classics a Thief in the Night on Sunday night. It's going to be an excellent movie on the last days. It's going to be a lot of fun. I invite you to bring your family, invite a, invite a friend, and uh, it, we're going to have a great day for Jesus all day on Sunday. I look forward to seeing you. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>